I've been in bands since I was 15. I don't remember how I found my first band, but I'm really glad I did. <laughs> I just, um, uh, I think my first band was with uh, Paul, uh, let's see, Paul, Joe, and Bob. Right. We rehearsed in uh, Joe's basement because he was the drummer. And he had all that equipment to move around. So it just, it was a uh, really part of a, a just a, uh, hmm. uh, okay. So, yeah, I, I knew that, I knew that I wanted to, I knew that I wanted to play music and that's, that's all I really wanted to do because that's, that made me feel good. And I'm really grateful to my mother for driving me around to uh, all the rehearsals. And she really supported me in this. Uh, she drove me around to rehearsals in that r big red land yacht that we had, the big red Buick station wagon. And, and we even had some rehearsals in our basement. So for other guys, it was about, you know, getting the girls and all that. But for me, it was about just the, the joy of music and, and, and playing. And at one point, my dad, my dad said to me early on that uh, if you if you stood still, you probably paid play better. And I said I probably would, but that wouldn't be. And I'm, I'm having too much fun, and I dare the audience to have more fun than I do. So I was part. I was an important part of a thing that was bigger than me. And I knew that I really didn't want to be around my parents anymore because I'd seen enough of what they were doing. So it was it was important for me to develop that. And I just want to keep playing as much as possible. <laughs> I want to dedicate this to the 610,000. I am dreaming again. There are piglets and ducklings and sheep. It's a beautiful place. And I'm taking a breath real deep. And I'm dreaming some more. And I'm now in a canyon so steep that there's just no way out. And I'm jolted awake by the beep. The beep, the beep, the beep I am living my life by the beep And I can't break free From living my life by the beep Now I'm jogging in place And the promises I mean to keep But my pulse runs so fast and I'm thinking I'm in much too deep But I can't walk away Cause I've promised that I will not sleep Till I finish my plan And the timer started to beep The beep, the beep, the beep I am living my life by the beep And I must break free from living my life by the beep I have tried to live without it But it's harder, yes, by far I get lost when I'm without it I just wander under the stars Maybe you can live without it With your TV and movies and bars But if you really think about it Is the space between so far
Now I'm sick here in bed And my fever is starting to peak And I can't breathe at all Without the structure of the beep Am I living my last How many miles before I sleep Am I, Have I lived in a line Or has it only been a beep The beep, the beep, the beep Am I living my life by the beep Now I can't break free From living my life by the beep The beep, the beep, the beep, the beep, the beep Am I living my life by the beep I know you've been married and divorced and all is not well with marriage number two, but my road to romance hasn't been very pretty either. Pretty desolate, actually. My first love was Allison in the second grade. I don't remember much of anything of what we said or did together, but I do remember that she sent me uh, a letter I was heartbroken when she moved away. She sent me a letter when she moved to um, Glens Falls, it was. yeah. So she drew two stick figures on the back of the envelope, and, and they were holding hands. I wish I still had that letter. So she was the first to leave. So, and then in fifth grade, there was Robin. She was Jewish and my, my parents raised me Catholic. So on Wednesdays, we'd have a, the, um, the, I'd buy a cupcake from the school bake sale. You remember those? So um, I would, uh, she would very kindly hang old, hold on to it for me when I, because I couldn't take it on the bus to the church. I was, when I went to confirmation class, I, I couldn't, uh, you know, she, so she would very kindly hold on to it for me until Thursday morning. That was very kind of her. And then things didn't get any better in Miller. There was Melissa. And uh, she was beautiful, brilliant, seemed like lots of fun. But uh, I had a big crush on her. And then suddenly she doesn't go to school there anymore. And nobody knows or says anything about where she went or what happened. Have you seen a trend here? <laughs> And then a couple of years later, uh, Kevin was going out with Donna. She was in my grade, very nice, really enjoyed her company. And she brought along with her three of her friends, each of whom was more beautiful than the other one. There was uh, Janine, Maria, and Renee. <laughs> and each of them wanted nothing to do with me. <laughs> so then by the time I get to college, I'm thinking, Oh, it's all over. Uh, no, oh, wait a minute. That's right. By the time I got to high school, I'm thinking, Oof, no, no, it's all over. No one's going to want to be with me ever. So uh, I had one date in uh, it's my senior year in high school. And uh, of course, you know, being high through most of those years probably didn't help. So by the time I get to college, you know, it's uh, it forced me to, to be to figure out what, what my relationship with women was because they were all over the place. And uh, I really didn't have any idea about how to, how to be with women because I, of the poor role models that I had, you know, teaching from my father and my brothers, you know, uh, not very healthy, uh, no role models. And I was just lost. Um, I didn't know how, I didn't know how to deal. And even when I dated another Robin in, in junior year, I still didn't really know how to relate. So that set the stage for me to thinking that, you know, I'll probably be alone for the rest of my life. Um, 
thinking that nobody would, would want, want to be with me. So uh, I don't know if that's ever going to change. I don't remember what your voice sounds like. You've been gone so long. We used to sit around the TV set and watch the birdies and eagles fly. Taught me how to live in this world And now I visit you in the next Your Cheshire cat grin lit up my heart And your love lifted me up You gave me everything that you had And you never asked a thing from me You gave me shelter, food and clothes And then you set me free Grateful for the times that we cried Grateful for the times when you tried to make my world a better place Grateful for the ties that still bind Grateful for the eyes that remind me you're always in the Times you drove me around in the rain and you didn't let me down. You took the time to show me how to play when we walked in the morning dew. You gave me courage when the world was falling down and you handled it all with grace. You gave me to, to explore the gifts that I now give to the world. You showed me when the truth has been falling down and you handled it all with grace. You showed me how to give my best when my worst is all that I've got. Grateful for the times that we cried. Grateful for the times when you tried to make my world a better place Grateful for the ties that still bind Grateful for the eyes that remind me you're always in the mirror I miss you all, forever and always My, I mentioned earlier that my parents gave me a hand grenade. They didn't really give me a hand grenade. They gave me something a whole lot more dangerous. Karma swirls around me and it knocks me off my feet. The anger that I have will only lead me to defeat. So I can put the anger monster back into its place Oh no The anger monster It feeds on everything The anger monster Everybody feels the sting The anger monster It feeds on everything the anger monster Everybody feels a sting With help from those much more attuned I can lessen the effect of anger in my living life so it won't have to wreck the good things that I've built so far or take a backwards pace 
so I can put the anger monster back into its place. Oh, yeah. The anger monster, it feeds on everything. The anger monster, everybody feels the sting. The anger monster, everybody feels the sting. The anger monster, everybody feels the sting. Everybody feels the sting. Everybody feels the sting. Everybody feels the sting. You may be wondering. How a man in his late 50s decided to become an actor in the first place. I've been trying to figure that one out myself. I've always been the emotional sort. I've had a lot of emotions. Uh, very happy, very sad, despondent, uh, angry, when, uh, uh, you know, and, and joyous when playing my bass. So I was having a conversation with a dear friend of mine one time when, when it came to me that the best place to put all this emotionality would be acting. And I've had some acting classes before, but I knew that I, would, I was swimming in the deep end when I met Sandy Shuren. And the, one of the first things she teaches is that I have to be in touch, well, that the, the, the playwright, I have to be, I have to, I, I have to feel my emotions and those emotions are at the bottom of the things that the playwright puts on top. So that way that I, I put the, the words on top of the emotions that I'm feeling at the time, that way everything is connected to me directly. And she also teaches that I have to be in touch with those emotions all the time. So all those emotions are brewing inside of me already and I have to be in touch with them all the time. And that's pretty scary, but it's real and it's me. So another thing that, that she teaches very important is that if someone is insulting me, for example, through their character, that I must take it personally. That way I'm connected to it directly. So where is this acting taken me? It's taken me right here. It gave me, it gave me the courage to even consider writing something like this and presenting it to you folks today. And also what it's helping me to do is become more of myself. I mean, some people think that acting is about pretending to be somebody else. And I take it that I, I become more of myself in all of this. And that way, whatever ca the character is going through, that you go along, you come with me on that, and I feel it too. The picture you see here was taken in the early 70s, about 73 or 74. The four people on the right are all gone. It's gone by their own hands with the help of cigarettes and alcohol. I spoke to several of them about their habits and addictions, sometimes harshly, sometimes lovingly, to no avail. Through this process, I found out that I'm a lot like them. I have my own addictions, but none uh, fortunately, none that will kill me as quickly as it did them, or at least that's what I tell myself now. However, in some ways, in many ways, I am not like them at all. Through some kind of grace, I found out how to take good care of myself and to listen to the higher self and take myself out of situations that would do me more harm than good. I found healthy ways to help me get through the pain of living. For me, the arts have been a salve that eases burdens, gives me inspiration, and makes me laugh at my foibles and the failings of others. I found out that everyone has their own battles, whether I see them or not, and that every family has their own flavor of crazy. It doesn't take much to scratch the surface to find out how, how, what these battles and flavors are. But just as every wound heals from the inside, my will to survive and thrive is bringing me to new places, 
to develop and share my gifts as a creative artist. If you have someone in your life who you see has destructive habits or addictions, or you see that person in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth, please take the time to listen to and love that person today. Right now, as a matter of fact, there is only now. The past is gone and the future may not happen for you or for them. It won't happen for the four people on the right of this photo. They've excluded themselves from the future. My eldest brother and I will walk bravely through life together for as long as we have. Thanks for being in my life. I would not have one were it not for you. Thank you for coming to my show, to our show actually. <laughs> I hope that it's entertained you somewhat. I did not mean this to be, uh, oh, let's just, yeah, thank you. It's, it's really meant a lot to me to be able to prepare this and deliver this to you because it's been, uh, it's been quite a journey for me to write this and it's been quite a journey for me to produce it and get the help that I needed to produce it. There were times in my life when I really felt that I really didn't have anybody that I could count on, but this has shown me irrefutably that there are many people who are wishing for my success. And I, and I hope that I, I know that you folks are also doing that. So thank you very much for that. And I just know that I've been blessed. I have several reasons for that. First off, like the old blues song goes, I woke up this morning. <laughs> Second of all, I have the capacity to uh, write songs and write my monologues and to present them to you. And for that, I'm, I'm very grateful and I'm really blessed. And finally, uh, I just can't count how many people have been supporting me all through the years in my creative life family, friends, and strangers, you know, uh, and I'm, I've been a performing musician for 35 years and all the people who've come to my various performances and, and delivered their love to whatever performance I've been at have been, has been just wonderful. And applause has been uh, gratefully received and it's like food to me, it's like food to an artist. And I, like food. So finally, I'd, I'd like to just say that I'm sorry if any of this has triggered you in any way. I don't mean to be confronting, but entertaining. So if that has been the case that I, I hope that you have or have gotten or will get the healing that you need in order to make the life you want. Because it's all about what we do with the hand that we've been dealt. And I choose to move forward with the hand that I've been dealt and use it to the best of my ability. And with that, I say good night. Thank you.